Hello. Welcome into another edition of Exiles TV. I'm Kevin Gallagher. Bill Perfita is taking the week off to enjoy some R and R, and he will be back with us on Monday. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. A lot of uh, good local things happening in Louisiana, and some that kind of suck. Uh, but uh, we're gonna t- <laughs> we're gonna talk about it anyway. Um, you know the case. We've talked about it here on the program, and it's been talked about everywhere. The case of Reverend Tony Spell a minister in uh, northern East Baton Rouge Parish up in Central who has been defying the governor's orders to keep churches closed or at a minimal uh, a number of attendees. Reverend Spell actually went to jail uh, over this and another charge that involved him and the church bus and a man who was protesting his church out in front of the church. Um, That is still going to be decided but The news is, uh, last week, the Supreme Court of the United States refused to hear Reverend Spell's appeal. So what does this mean for the Reverend Spell, and will he wind up doing any serious jail time, or will the powers that be decide they don't want to prosecute this to the fullest extent of the law? In just a few short minutes, uh, we're going to get a professional opinion from um, attorney at law Franz Borghardt, friend of ours now. Franz was going to join us here because he loves the camera almost as much as Bill does, but um, Franz actually got informed that he has been in contact with someone with the coronavirus. Now, for Franz, this will be number two. Franz actually got the coronavirus and got over it back in the summertime. Uh, He is uh, currently on isolation, quarantine because of the coronavirus. He will join us via telephone. Meanwhile, is anybody still keeping count of the murders? Anyone? Can anybody tell me? Because they're coming on so fast, I'm losing count. It's not just the murders, but it's the shootings. But we had another one. Man found shot to death. Sky Sale Avenue apartment complex early this morning. Uh, let me put on the old eyeglasses, and I'll tell you what I can about it. Um, this is a case uh, with the East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office. They say shortly before 6.30 this morning, a man was found shot to death inside an apartment in the 8200 block of Sky Sale Avenue. Um, and other than that, that's what we know. The guy's identity has not been released. Of course, there are no suspects at this time. And uh, the news has stopped toting the deaths. This, this story doesn't say, like, this is the you know, 125th. or I, I don't know what the number is. I'll try to get you some homicide numbers later on in the program. But it just keeps on rolling. Well, we head to an election where crime is one of the key points in the election for mayor president of East Baton Rouge Parish. We got a challenger, Steve Carter, who says that if he's elected mayor, he can and he will take steps to uh, make sure that the police are as tough on crime as folks would hope for them to be. Meanwhile, uh, we got a mayor who's running for re-election, and uh, I think that her philosophy and the philosophy of the chief is to reach out and try to lower crime rates through a more indirect method of reaching out to the community and the people. Um, whether that's working or not is still to be seen. No doubt we have a spike in crime. I don't know if you agree or not. The mayor says that you could put this whole big spike off on COVID-19 um, because she says the years before, the two years before COVID, crime was violent crime and murders were reducing. They were still god-awful high, though, in a lot of people's opinion. So this is another thing we'll talk about uh, later this hour. And also, I'm going to bring up uh, my friend and colleague, Clarence Bugs. We're going to talk about the mayor's race and the direction the city parish is heading and uh, some other matters that are uh, before us. I I hate to to harp on this, but if you have not early voted in this election and you are a resident of East Baton Rouge Parish, please take some time on Saturday, get to your polling place, and vote. If you don't know where your polling place is, quick trip to the interwebs, and you can go to GoVote, spell that the Kunas way, GoVote.com, and it'll tell you. You put in some simple information, it'll tell you what your district is and where you go to vote on Saturday. This is not the same as early voting locations. Those are different. Uh, For instance, my early voting location was over on uh, Harrells Ferry Road at uh, uh, one of the Breck Parks. Um, This Saturday, I'll be going to a public school over on uh, Jones Creek. So find out where your polling place is. It's only going to take you 15 or 20 minutes. Just swing by and please go cast a vote. Uh, If you're unhappy with the leadership we have now, please remember that that person was elected with less than 30% of the registered voters in East Baton Rouge Parish showing up on election day to cast their vote. 
So I think it's just a good thing. No matter who casts their vote, which way, no matter which person wins, it's always better when more of us participate in the system than fewer of us. I mean, think about it. If you, if you want balanced elections and you want fair elections, you've got to have a fair representation from both sides of the political fence. Both the Democrats and the Republicans and the non-party aligned people all need to do what they've been given the right to do, that show up on election day and cast a vote in that election. So there, lecture over. Coming up, the Supreme Court of the U.S. has decided they do not want to hear the case of Reverend Tony Spell who's in trouble with the law for flouting the governor's orders on COVID-19. We'll talk about that with Franz Borchardt, attorney at law, in just a few minutes when we return with Exiles TV. Thanks. I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Melanie has exactly what it takes to be passionate, to be knowledgeable, to be thorough. Melanie has a passion for doing the right thing for families, even when the right thing might be difficult. And I think that's best exemplified by the thousands of hours of pro bono work that she does. And even after 30 years of practicing law, Melanie still has that fire. Melanie Newcomb-Jones, Court of Appeal. I don't know if you've been following this case, but uh, ever since the COVID-19 thing started, the governor's lockdowns, is, uh, he shut down churches uh, before just declaring a limit on how many people. He just said, don't have church services. Uh, one church in East Baton Rouge Parish in the town of Central, city of Central, I beg your pardon, no disrespect to Central, uh, has decided no. And throughout this entire thing, the Reverend Tony Spell and his church have been continuing to have church services, despite the fact that at one point he was arrested and he had to be bailed out of jail for it. Uh, the arrest was, uh, there were other charges involved, but uh, the Supreme Court of the United States, this thing has been appealed all the way to the top, and the Supreme Court, um, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to talk about it. Joining us now to talk about the ramifications of that is, uh, di well, I was almost said district attorney. He once worked for the prosecutor's uh, office, but uh, attorney at law, Franz Borghardt, joins us. Franz, are you with me? Yes, sir. Hey, How are you doing? Thanks for being with us. Franz, uh, as a person who uh, tries cases of all kinds and has uh, seen cases of all kinds, and admittedly you were sort of outspoken on this whole subject of uh, Reverend Tony Spell. Occasionally. Um, 
What does the Supreme Court ruling mean for him, and what does it mean for the lockdowns? Well, it's interesting because this decision is not a decision. It's a refusal to hear the appeal from the lower court. Basically, the court rejected the appeal that basically stated that... So, so let me take a step back. The pastor appealed the lower court saying that the governor governor could do what he was doing constitutionally, mm-hmm. uh, the executive orders. So, And that, that refusal to take the case basically is, at this time, a victory for the governor. Now, what's interesting is, Kevin, this decision comes at the heels of another Supreme Court decision uh, out of a New York case where a governor in New York had shut down churches and the Supreme Court said, no, you can't really do that. You have to be consistent with your public health safety. And it's not okay to say, well, bars are open, but churches can't be. Uh, now, it's important to note, the governor didn't shut down didn't shut down churches. It just was social distancing and restrictive. Mm-hmm. So um, it's a win for the governor. Um, his criminal charges, the pastor's criminal charges, are still pending in the 19th Judicial District Court. He can raise the constitutionality in the criminal proceedings, this was a civil challenge. He had sued the state, the governor, uh, challenging the executive authority. He can he can challenge the constitutionality as it relates to to a criminalizing of his behavior, uh, with the exception of the assault charge. Uh, where he's alleged to have tried to run someone over with a bus. Yeah, that's a whole different uh, piece, that, piece of no information. There's a constitution challenge there. Uh, that was that incident was reportedly captured on a camera where he had backed the right. bus up. Uh, I, I have seen I, I've seen said video. Uh, minds have, can disagree on what was going on there, uh, but that's different. That's different than the violations of the order charges, which are still pending. Um, and and look, candidly. This is not the end of the story for the pastor. He can he can continue to work this up, but this was an appeal of an initial decision to kick this out of the federal court and state court. So um, I'm sure this is not going to be the last. Now the other question is: Has the governor governor done anything to change his initial executive orders? Has he shut churches down? Has he restricted them? Well, he's restricted attendance. In the past, but I think the new order, Kevin, doesn't restrict church uh, attendance. I may be wrong on that. Hmm, interesting. But this is a victory for the Louisiana Constitution and the emergency powers it gives the governor. Correct. Cor- 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 correct. This is a victory for the governor, for public health and safety. Uh, candidly, candidly, this had been standing law previously. The thought was with the new Supreme Court, the thought was a more quote unquote conservative leaning court might err towards or, or lean towards uh, that of the pastor's position of putting church above public health and safety. Does does the Reverend Spell have any I mean, other than civil court, does he have any further recourse after this or is it all done? So so I think there's gonna be more challenges. Uh, I think every time there's a new order it creates a a, a environment where he can challenge it, and then candidly, again, he can challenge the constitutionality on the criminal charge. He can say that these these executive orders violated his constitutional rights, and he shouldn't be charged criminally. Uh, the civil suit is about money, right? Right. The criminal case is about whether or not he's going to be convicted of a crime or not. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, Franz, I'd like you to hang on, if you don't mind, through a commercial sure. break, because there's some other things. You are a person who has tested positive for COVID, has gone through it, uh, and yeah. have, have, have tested negative for COVID. And as I understand it, yeah. you're right now under quarantine because you may have been exposed to it again. Uh, yeah. And I know there may be a limit to, to what you can discuss about your quarantine, but uh, I, I, if I would, I'd like to get some opinions from you as someone sure. who has gone through the coronavirus uh, and, and a lot of us, like for instance, I, I think I'm a good example. This thing's been around f- since February or January, and I seemingly have been lucky, and I haven't been exposed to it. You're, you're, you're bulletproof, Kevin. Uh, maybe so. I'd hate to think that, you know, may, maybe I'm huh? immune. Maybe they need to take my blood. Who knows? Happy to stick around, Kevin. <laughs> All right, then. We will take a quick break. This is a little earlier than anticipated, but only by seconds. 
Let's take care of this little bit of business and more with Franz Borkart when we return on Exiles TV. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2 as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me the feeling. Credentials, experience, and dedication matter when you're hiring someone. My 30 years in the practice of all areas of the law, my extensive appellate experience, certification as a family law specialist, leadership in our local bar association speak to my unequal legal credentials. My thousands of hours of pro bono legal work demonstrate my dedication. I seek to serve, not for promotion, not for politics, but to honorably serve each of you. Melanie Newcomb Jones, Court of Appeal. Surprise, something good has finally happened in 2020. Yours truly, The Clarence Bug Show, gets to be with you every day of the week. That's right, 11 to 12 every weekday. And of course, The Exiles, right in front of yours truly, from 10 to 11, yours truly, 11 to 12. So now, it's appointment viewing five days a week here on the Pelican, the Clarence Bug Show. The only thing missing is you. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Right now, during the Team Honda Upgrade event, get a new 20 Accord Sport for just $309 a month with no money down, no first payment, and no security deposit. It's time to upgrade to your new Honda at Louisiana's number one new car dealer, Team Honda, on Segan Lane. Hey, welcome back. It's Exiles TV. I'm Kevin Gallagher. Bill Perfita has taken a few days off. Uh, we're talking COVID-19. If you missed the uh, segment uh, previous, uh, we've got uh, Franz Borkhardt is on the line with us still, attorney at law. And Franz has been, uh, in the past, has, has had COVID-19. He's gone through this experience. I, 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 my gut tells me I haven't been exposed to it and I haven't gotten it because I haven't been sick. I haven't had really a, a day of feeling very sick at all since this whole thing came out. So if I haven't been exposed and I haven't gotten sick, am I taking it too lightly, Franz, speaking as somebody who has? Well, well, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. Um, what I will tell you is it is impossible to avoid absolute exposure unless, unless you live in total isolation, which none of us do, right? So, so you can catch it by contact. You can catch it by proximity. Um, it's just a matter of probability, right? So I'm, 
I'm at low probability of catching it again, Kevin, because I've already had it. But it doesn't mean I can't get it. Um, I was in close proximity with someone who had contracted it and didn't necessarily quarantine, which is, you know, it is what it is. Uh, And once I found out that he had it, I immediately quarantined. Um, Now, I'm quarantining for 14 days. I think the CDC came out uh, recently and said 10 days. 10 days, yes. Yeah, but keep in mind, if I have any symptoms, which could be just about anything, if I have any symptoms, that extends the quarantine until such time that I don't have 14 days until such time after the last symptom. Interesting. Do you mind talking about when you had it earlier this year? Um, I had it over Father's Day. Okay, and how sick no, did you... No, how... I, I had a mild case of it, Kevin, uh-huh. um, which was still pretty crappy, uh, if I could use that word on the TV. You just did. Um, <laughs> cruddy, cruddy. Um, it was unpleasant. It was. I had extreme exhaustion. I had uh, some aches in my lower back and kidney region. Um and when I say exhaustion, I mean exhaustion. Uh, I never had to go to the hospital. I never had severe respiratory issues. And I did lose taste for a few days, but it wasn't much beyond that. And as soon as I got my test result, I was actually on the mend at that point. Was this flu-like for you? Um, it was worse than a flu, but, worse. but in that league. In that league. Yeah. This is the thing. Uh, someone else we know, a mutual friend of ours, Ted James, a state representative from Baton Rouge, uh, he mentioned the absolute exhaustion when he was in the hospital with COVID. I mean, not right. a, not enough uh, strength or gumption to, to, to get out of bed. Uh, and he told a story of it. Finally, a, a, a male nurse or a nurse's aide came in in the middle of the night and said, you've got to get out of that bed, man. And he took him up and stood him up and walked him around. And that was the beginning of the reversal of, you know, of, uh, of the process and, and Ted starting to feel better. So, uh, you know, I don't want to make light of this thing. Uh, I do feel... You know, the conspiracy theorist feels like there are people, while the disease is very real, the virus, I think that there are people who are using it to advantage for whatever reason they may have. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but, um, you know, what, what's, in, what's in it for Louisiana and the governor? Federal dollars. Um, but um, y- your advice would be, if you think you've been exposed, definitely lay down, lay low, take it easy. And how many times have you been tested? Are you going to get tested again after quarantine? So the problem is, I've since being exposed, I've tested negative twice, but it's in the incubation period. Mm-hmm. So that test is a false sense of security. Um, so after I'm done in the incubation period, on my 14th day, I might go get a test. I might go get a test just out of an abundance of caution. But I mean, if I'm asymptomatic, the question becomes, why am I going to get a test? You know, well, and so the question that's I, still not answered is if a person is asymptomatic, although they've got COVID nineteen, are they a transmitter? And I, I keep, I keep, I keep seeing uh, disagreeing stories in the news. Some some sources are saying no, if you're not sick, you're not a transmitter, and some saying, oh yeah, you very well could be. I will, I will tell you what my plan is. My plan is after fourteen days, at the very least, I will continue to do social distancing, wearing a mask. Um, I need to be a little bit more responsible. Mm-hmm. I think I take full ownership of that, um, and I plan to do that. And I'm gonna it's gonna it's gonna dictate some of my behavior, and I'm okay with that. Um, so um, there is trepidation about vaccines. Are you one of the people who will probably readily get the vaccine once it's available? I don't know that I will qualify immediately for it. Uh, I am not an anti-vaxxer. Um, I would. Like a good software update, I'd like to get the bugs out of the vaccine first. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like there to be some protocol verification. Uh, but yeah, I do plan to get the vaccine. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And some people look at me like I'm crazy because I've made noise about this whole thing being taken advantage of. But just because an actual virus was manipulated for political gain one way or the other doesn't mean that you shouldn't take the potential cure if you can get one or at right. least the armor from the virus. So, yeah. I don't believe I am optimistic maybe foolishly. I think the virus the the, the uh, vaccine will be affordable. Mm-hmm. Uh, I may be It better be. On this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just basing that based on other vaccines. Mhm. Uh, 
So I, I, I will be one that gets it. Um, I that is a now the legality of forced vaccination is another discussion for another day. I don't think we're um, at that point yet. Do you, do you, do you, yeah, I don't think we're at that point either. I think it'll be similar to other vaccinations. And, and candidly, you know, I think most people, I think the herd will get vaccinated. Now we we know what happens when the herd gets vaccinated, and then we have some outliers which can be problematic. We've seen that historically. Well, we have um, we have flu bugs every year. You know? Yeah, yeah. But you can die, candidly, you can die from the flu. Or I whooping mean, cough. Or, there, there are a number of things still going around. I, I just mentioned whooping cough, the flu, uh, various, yeah. you know, uh, maybe, maybe a, uh, a mutated strain of the flu that your vaccine doesn't cover. I mean, it's a crapshoot, you know, one way or the other. So, so I live, my problem, my problem is, Kevin, that I live a very social life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to eat food. I like to hang out with people. Um, and as you know, I do radio. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I do radio without a mask on, and that's not responsible, uh, especially about people in studio. I certainly, I've done, I've done podcasts with you guys since the pandemic and not worn a mask. Um, and that's, that's not an accusation by any stretch. But that's going to be an example of something I, I start doing more of. Well, if you got um, if you got sick from being on with us, blame Perfita. Just you know. it's easy to blame. He's not here right now. I can blame Perfita all day long. Exactly. That's exactly my point. When he's not here to defend himself, blame him by all means. Same thing for me when I'm not here. <laughs> I love you guys both. <laughs> we love you too, Franz, and thanks so much for your time. Uh, okay. One last question for you, and it is a little bit about the mandatory. Do you think that we could see a point where people are wanting to see a card signifying that you've had the vaccine before they say, I, I let you into the nightclub or let you into the restaurant? So, or So businesses, private businesses can do whatever private businesses want. So remember, what we're talking about is if a private business says, we want verification of your vaccination, there's not a lot Kevin can do about that, right? Except show verification than, or turn around walking away. Turn around walk away. Yeah, your, the, your dollar will yield your response. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, now, the, the interesting question is public facilities, education, uh, government buildings. You know, education is going to be where you really see the push. But we already know what the law is on that. If mm-hmm. your kids don't have the vaccination and immunization, you know, they can say, look, you create a public health risk. Yeah, and if you if you the anti vaxxers run the risk of having to homeschool their kids because yeah. schools have the right to tell them they can't come. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Franz, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you on the other side of your uh, self imposed exile. Thank you, sir. And I hope you don't. I, I I hope you're not positive for a second time. That would just be me. Me, me too. That would I'd be like terrible. To be, I'd like to be clear this time. All right. All right. Have a great day, Kevin. Attorney at Law, Franz Borghardt there, and uh, we'll talk with him again sometime very, very soon here on Exiles TV. Uh, as I did mention to Franz during the phone call, and I'll read a little bit to you from the uh, story. This is uh, from, hey, stop that. Um, this is from Mark Ballard at The Advocate. Uh, coronavirus, coronavirus vaccines are on the way to Louisiana, says our Senator Bill Cassidy, says they are going out as we speak. Uh, getting into the story, uh, Pfizer already is shipping vaccine out. It's on jets flying to locations to begin to be administered, uh, according to uh, the Baton Rouge Republican Senator. He told them this during a press conference on a bipartisan effort to pass emergency aid for people and businesses. Uh, Senator Kennedy says that bipartisan effort is still being held up in the House uh, by the House wanting to put things not directly related to the COVID crisis uh, into the bill. Uh, three pharmaceutical companies have come up with vaccines that stem uh, that will help stem COVID. One of them is Pfizer. Uh, I've forgotten the name of the other two. Um, oh, but here they are. Uh, Morris Dixon, a distributor in Shreveport, is involved in distributing the Pfizer vi- uh, uh, the Pfizer vaccine here in Louisiana. He's spoken with officials that have uh, deep freezers that can handle. Uh, the vaccine in large, large numbers. Moderna was the name I was looking for a moment ago. They have a COVID-19 vaccine that does not require super cool storage. They're applying for its emergency youth authorization from the FDA, and Cassidy says that will soon be approved and they'll be shipping out the vaccine soon. 
Um, as for how the vaccine is going to be triaged out to people, I mean, who's going to get preferential? I would hope that the people at most at risk from actually getting seriously sick or dying from this virus would be at the top of the list to receive the vaccine. Anyway, as I said, a lot of people find it surprising, but um, given the opportunity to get the vaccine, I'm going to get the vaccine. I got the shingles vaccine. I get the flu shot every year. Why not get this? The question with coronavirus, is this going to be a one-time thing or is it going to be like flu where we need to get boosters uh, for mutations in the virus? Hey, coming up, we're going to talk with uh, my colleague and uh, host of the Clarence Bug Show. You know his name. Clarence Bugs joins us next on Exiles TV. Bellello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bellello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. By all standards, he is a champion for consumers. Because of Public Service Commissioner Eric Spremetta, our utility rates are 35% less than the national average, the lowest in all of America. He saved ratepayers over $8 billion. Commissioner Scrametta brought us more reliable power plants and energy-efficient solar fields. Public Service Commissioner Eric Scrametta. Keep the commissioner who keeps our rates low. Melanie has exactly what it takes to be passionate, to be knowledgeable, to be thorough. Melanie has a passion for doing the right thing for families, even when the right thing might be difficult. And I think that's best exemplified by the thousands of hours of pro bono work that she does. And even after 30 years of practicing law, Melanie still has that fire. Melanie Newcomb Jones, Court of Appeal. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. Hey, welcome back to Exiles TV. I'm Kevin Gallagher, Bill Profita. Off for a few more days. He'll be back with us on Monday. Wait, this is not Bill Profita? No. Oh, okay. I got, I got, to, I got to get shorter. <laughs> you <gotta> just <laughs> hope you're watching, Bill. <laughs> we love you. We love you. I got to tell you, though, they, in truth, this, they shouldn't make fun of Bill's stature, but there have been times where we were having our picture taken, and he literally would turn to me and go, can you just kind of scrunch down just a little bit? Yeah. It's yeah. like, no, man. 
Tippy toes, dude. Tippy toes. Come well, up to my level. <laughs> believe it or not, I was as short as Bill Profita is until my senior year in high school. You're joking me. In one summer, hit that growth spurt. I went from the shortest person in the entire household to the tallest person in one summer. One that's a hell of a spurt, man. Yeah. Was that a painful summer for you? Yeah, it was. That's a lot of bone <laughs> growing, man. Yeah, everybody thought I was going to be another, quote, Lil Sarge. Because uh, my dad was considerably I've only seen photos, but he looked like a little fire plug of a man. He was that. Mm -hmm. He was that. God bless him. Uh, Clarence Bugs, of course. Uh, I, I didn't actually get to say your name, but uh, Clarence Bugs of the Clarence Bugs Show. I thought I'd bring him up and sit with me for a little while and talk about some items. Clarence, I'm going to ask Jonathan to put this picture up on the screen that we lifted from this is from a uh, former police chief pat englade's facebook page uh -huh. okay see that oh as your mayor president i'll continue to work on uniting baton rouge very diverse group of lady police officers there and down in the lower corner it says to re-elect sharon weston broom hmm. as pat points out in his facebook page and i'm going to read directly from pat englade's facebook page okay. illegal Every administration, as far back as I can remember, was held to the law that no civil service employees are allowed to participate in political activities. Mm -hmm. This is clearly a political act. The bottom right corner, re-elect Sharon Weston Broom. Now, I am going to give her the benefit of the doubt and say she probably posed for this photo months, maybe oh, even sure. a year or more ago. Sure. But there it was, and somebody decided it would be a good idea to use it. What they don't understand is that they have put those five police officers' careers in jeopardy. Yeah. Those I, five police women. My, my gut says not done with any malicious or, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for, any underhanded attempt here mm -hmm. but certainly you've got to think with Sharon's long history of involvement in politics that she had to be aware of this now the question obviously then becomes did she sign off on this or was this simply someone affiliated with someone the with the campaign deciding mm -hmm. to take an action without everything should be okayed in my opinion oh yeah with the candidate mm -hmm. but from chapter 14 prohibitive activities this is in the civil service code from civilservice.louisiana.gov okay no person shall be appointed to promote or to promote to or demoted to or dismissed from any position in classified service or in any way favored or discriminated against with respect to employment in the classified service because of his or her political or religious opinions or affiliations, race, sex, blah, blah, blah. Right. Article B says, no employee in the classified service and no member of the commission shall directly or indirectly pay or promise to pay any assessment, subscription, contribution for any political party, faction, or candidate, or solicit or take any part in soliciting any such assessment, subscription, or contribution to any employee of the civil service. It also goes on to say they may not take part in any kind of act in any kind of campaign activities of any kind. Um, again, I don't think that these ladies posed in that photo with the mayor no. knowing that it would ever be a campaign ad. No, it doesn't look like it. Looks like a social event or or maybe some gathering uh, at the beginning of her era in in the uh, the mayor's race in baton rouge but it doesn't look good it's bad optics but bad optics but is it illegal eh. well it's illegal for those five officers is it illegal for her campaign correct it doesn't necessarily say the campaign is violating any law the officers are by right by being right. by appearing in a campaign ad whether they knew they were going to or not now the With, ultimate question then becomes however Let's see if you ask it before I do. Yeah, we, Go ahead. we had no idea this picture was going to be used in this fashion. So there was no intent on our part. Someone affiliated with the campaign took a liberty that was not theirs to mm -hmm. take. I would hope that the Civil Service Board would look at it that way and not even want to convene hearings mm -hmm. for these five officers. Clearly, I no. think they've been manipulated whether it was with malice of forethought or not mm -hmm. here's my question okay. early voting's over the election is in three days take it down does it matter does it matter if she even takes it down it does does the risk 
do the benefits outweigh the risk at is, this point? Is it going to change anybody's vote in your mind? Probably not. Probably not. There, there's always, and, and you never know, being 2020, individuals are individuals. We all have our different perceptions. So if you're on the fence and you've been hearing this incessant drum beat about crime, 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 but then you see a picture where the mayor is standing with this real diverse group of law enforcement officers, well, maybe she has the backing of law enforcement, so I'll give her my backing too. Mm -hmm. as, as shallow as that is to elect the leader of the parish for the next four years, there are some people who could conceivably be swayed by just such an argument. There's, well, here's another argument. I think cop or no cop. If somebody asks me if the mayor's there and somebody says, Kevin, you want to pose in a picture with the mayor? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pose. Well, of course you are. You know, I'm not a big fan of John Bell Edwards, but they yeah. like, Kevin, get in here for a photo with the governor. You're I'm not going to pose. You're not going to pull up your phone and say, Mayor, pursuant to uh, yeah. Section 3, Code 4. You, no, you, you, yeah. you Mayor, you I get voted in line. against your tax increase two years ago, <laughs> so I'll pass on the photo. Yeah, you, you get in line with everybody else. I and think you, it's human you nature. And take the if, picture. If, if someone's a VIP of any kind and you got the opportunity to get your picture taken with them, you step in and do it. One of the unintended consequences of the interwebs, it's around forever. Mm -hmm. It can be used for all sorts of, of nefarious purposes. And you don't have the time to go down the checklist of items of, should I take this picture or not, thinking five years down the road, what may come back as a result of it. Particularly, again, when you're in the company of a high-profile individual who wants to take a picture with you. Mm. What do you do? I, I, don't, I don't know what we do. Uh, and I don't know which way our parish is going to go. If I had a crystal ball in front of me and was forced to make a prediction, I'll say advantage share in Weston Broom. Oh, easily. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a heavy African-American voting you know, mm -hmm. block in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, she is generally, I think, loved and appreciated amongst that voting block. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that also her appeal and her, uh, you know, it, that, that crosses racial boundaries. There are right. plenty of people who, you know, don't look like Sharon Weston Broom who are mm -hmm. just fine with the job that she's done. Right. She's been immensely popular in the city for, what, 35, mm -hmm. 40 years. I mean, people remember when she was two on your side reporter. Yeah, I remember she's, when she came to Baton Rouge. Uh, now, Steve Carter is equally well known, but I just think that there's a huge advantage in being the incumbent, especially in this parish. And, and there's additionally, there's the COVID-19 factor to where campaigning has not been traditionally what it's been, to where you can't go out and press the flesh and beat the doors down and things of that nature. And let's not underestimate the gender card in all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the fact that there are any number of people in this city that are females that have no problem with the job that she's done so mm -hmm. far. So not only are you fighting this solidified color voting block, but there's also the gender card in that as well. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Steve Carter is pretty much limited to playing the conservative card. Mm -hmm. And in a city like Baton Rouge, eh, good luck with that one, bud. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Steve Carter is a good man. I think he's, he's great a great guy. Very, I think he's a very clever man, and I think that we could do a lot worse than having him as our leader. Easily. But I'm going to say advantage broom oh, no, on Saturday night. No two ways about it. And, and you know, you can always make the argument, okay, who's going to be going to vote for someone? Who's going to vote against someone? Mm -hmm. And while that has its merits, that particular argument, at the end of the day, there is my humble opinion only, a much stronger, more dedicated block in the gender and the race voting in EBR mm -hmm. than there is on the ideological side. Just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I also think it, it, it bears to be said that we don't have a lot of voters, uh, and this is generally speaking, across the United States and in East Baton Rouge as well, that are paying a great deal of attention Mm -hmm. to things. I mean, there are people who are bringing up snafus that she made in her first weeks in office, and I right. think other people have completely forgotten about these things. Any other time that may carry a considerable amount of weight, 
But, but quite frankly, with COVID fatigue, throw in the nastiness, the ugliness of three and three quarter years of presidential politics with the media bias and the whole nine. Many people are just simply glad to finally flush all of this out of their system. Mm -hmm. I would only say to Ms. Broom, ma'am, I think you're going to win. Um, but I think that people could have asked for more momentum in your first term mm -hmm. and a little more return on investment in that first term. Mm -hmm. So please, in your second term and your third, if you win another one of those, please, let's kick it in the ass and, and, and get some real progress going. I mean, Move BR is a great idea, but the fact that we're only just now, after two years of taxation, mm. starting to turn some earth, and that's just for sidewalks. Right. You know, we want to see some improvements, not only in our standard of living here in the, in the parish, but in parish services. Uh, I hate to bitch, but, you know, I'm supposed to have my trash picked up on Mondays. Well, my trash was picked up at around 2.30 yesterday afternoon. Right. Tuesday. Right. Right. This is a common occurrence. Well, common occurrence. Let's find out what's the problem with that. Unfortunately, you are talking about the wheels of government. Mm -hmm. and but she's in charge. No one has ever accused the wheels of government of ever moving too quickly. Unless, of course, we're talking about the Affordable Care Act. But that's a different show for a different day. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, though. Hey, You're listen, welcome. we're going to take a quick pause. Take care of some business. We'll be back with more on Exiles TV. Spiders. Premier Pest Services. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugge Jr. and I am a general dentist at Frugge Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. Louisiana's number one Honda dealer welcomes you to our biggest clearance sale of the year, the Happy Honda Day sales event. Get year-end clearance pricing on over 900 new Hondas, plus a complimentary lifetime powertrain warranty with every new Honda. Save thousands on your new Honda right here at Team Honda. Hi, business owners. Phase three. Woohoo! But do your customers know you're back? Well, that's where the Clarence Bug Show and Pelican Broadcasting can help. Right now, we've got great rates on advertising packages to help you get the word out. Shoot me an email at bugsclarence at gmail.com. Or better yet, call me up. I'd love to talk with you. 225-485-6839. Let's get together and make Phase 3 the best it can possibly be. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. 
PremierPestServices.com. We're back, and it is Exiles TV. So glad to have you with us. Clarence Bugs is joining me for a few minutes to uh, wrap up the program, and then, of course, he will take over for the Clarence Bug Show coming up at the top of the Make hour. Make sure you stick around. Exactly. We're gonna let's let's just go ahead and get into it. I, I, again, I, I keep threatening to break out the tinfoil and make myself a little hat, um, but we're in a situation now. In 2016, during the presidential election, mm -hmm. everything went absolutely like clockwork, exactly right. the way it should. Mm -hmm. There were no irregularities in counting. There were no interruptions in counting. And everything went as it should. We found out at the end of the evening that President Donald Trump, although not taking the majority of the popular vote, right. did take the majority in enough states to take the electoral votes and win. Mm -hmm. Immediately, within 24 to 48 hours, we were hearing about Russian collusion to affect the outcome of the election. Ad nauseum. They had no specific allegation. They had really nothing specific to say about it mm -hmm. other than Trump colluded with the Russians right. to influence the election. And that was enough to launch three and a half years mm -hmm. of investigations that led to an absolutely bogus um, impeachment. Mm -hmm. This time around... And a $50 million price tag, by the way. This time around, we've got an election that was... in. Six major states was interrupted in the middle of the count. In the dead of night. In each one of those states, at the point of interruption, Trump was ahead of Joe Biden by percentage. Mm -hmm. Then when the count resumed and the data started to flow again, Joe Biden was suddenly ahead and of all, Donald Trump. Not to mention all the statistical impossibilities that mm -hmm. were encompassed in all of the votes. How about states like Pennsylvania that had more mail-in ballots come in than they printed <laughs> and sent out? Uh-huh. What does that tell you? Uh-huh. Not does to mention all of the ballots that only had one race, and we all know presidential races, you have a ballot full of races, amendments, and so on. The hundreds of thousands that only had one mark in one race. Right. I, I submit to you that hardly anyone votes just that top item no and steps out of the booth or finishes filling out the the, the write-in ballot mm -hmm. the other thing about some of these uh, B biden only mail-in ballots was they were pristine and identical mm -hmm. as if the, the the mark itself the check mark in the box had been made by a, a, by a printing stamp. by printing or a stamp or something mm -hmm. of that nature mm -hmm. they didn't look like they'd been done by hand mm -hmm. according to some people who were looking at the ballots and counting them Either way, what we've got is at least enough testimonial and probably more than enough physical evidence to at least merit a thorough investigation. I have said on more than one occasion, there is no universe where this is as small as personalities as Donald Trump and Joe Biden. This is about the preservation of our republic. Mm -hmm. This is about being able to go to bed at night lay your head down on the pillow and know that one of the most sacred tenets of our society has been honored. Your vote counts. Mm -hmm. And if we so very easily acquiesce in this particular instance, we can pretty much kiss every election from this point on goodbye. Yep, it will make little sense to reasoning people especially the 73 million that voted mm -hmm. for Donald Trump mm -hmm. to ever take part in an election again. Now, the scary part is you said reasonable people. The problem comes in when you attempt to reason with unreasonable people. Well, Good luck with that. I think, Clarence, that there's a sadness in that there are people who, um, who voted for Biden and voted Democrat, and because it's largely a Democrat victory, although mm -hmm. the GOP took a lot of House seats. Oh, yeah. Took a lot of House seats. Yeah. Um, if those Biden voters were all voting down the ballot, mm -hmm. some of those House seats wouldn't have been lost. It's just statistically, there's too many anomalies in this mm -hmm. election to ignore, and yet our mainstream media seems to be telling us ignore it. Well, 
they are who they are and they do what they do. We understand that. Social media falls in the same category as well. The danger in all of this for me is that eventually this will probably end up in the highest court in the land. And what will be potentially at stake then is the overturning of the election. When that happens, half of America is going to wake up after having been asleep overnight, literally and figuratively, they're going to wake up and say, whoa, wait a minute, this SOB in the dead of night was trying to steal the election. Only because the folks that they rely on for news and facts have been hiding the truth from them all along. If and when that happens, all hell's going to break I'm loose. Gonna, I'm going to propose another uh, scenario. Okay. That if this election is overturned, if the election is overturned, what you're going to get is a big Trump stole the election. Of course. Of it's course. not going to be... The election was overturned because the left tried to cheat and it didn't. It, it wasn't a good enough cheat job. It's going to be Trump did it. But Trump that's, did it. That's the probably intended consequence of attempting to hide the truth from half of the American public. When you do find out the truth, well, certainly it can't be because they hid the truth from me. There must be something nefarious going on here. All I'm saying is, America, don't gaslight us and tell us that we're crazy. Let's investigate this thing. There's more than enough evidence to investigate, despite what Senator Bill Cassidy says. I love you, Senator Cassidy, but that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard you say. And if it's not your turn to be snookered, hoodwinked, or bamboozled this time, it might be your turn next time. 30 seconds. What's coming up on the uh, Clarence Bug Show? Stuff. Lots of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Got 27 seconds left. There you go. Hey, we thank you so much. Tomorrow, live music as Cumberland County returns to Exiles TV tomorrow Sweet. morning. We'll get some live music here on television, and we'll talk about the plight of people who would love to be able to make a living as a musician in this state. That was once a thing. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Until tomorrow, please take care of yourself. Clarence, thanks for your time. God bless everyone. See you later, Bill.